right now God God you take up residence in our praise and in our worship God we ask that you change every mind that is worrying into a mind that is worshiping you God this morning in the name of Jesus we thank you we thank you we thank you God you've made ways you've opened doors you've healed bodies You've regulated minds and hearts beats, God. And for that, we praise you. We give you the honor and the glory. Visit us in this place on this morning, God. Fill the room with your presence and with your anointing. Be in everything that is said and done. In the name of Jesus. We thank you, God. We love you and we praise you. Touch each and every member that is coming in this edifice. Those that are tuning in on Facebook and Ambo Stream, God. We ask that you allow the anointed to flow through the airways, God, and meet them right where they are. In the name of Jesus, God, don't let this time of worship and praise end with us being the same. Change us and make us the more like you, God. In the name of Jesus, we cast our cares at your feet, God. Thank you for freeing us to worship, God. In the name of Jesus, touch the man of God this morning. Bring the word, God, with power and with anointing. Be in every song that is sung, every word that is said. In Jesus' name, we pray. We come bringing the sacrifices of praise to you. Amen. Amen. How many of you are expecting great things from God? Hallelujah. And we will find that whenever we expect something, that God rises to our expectation and even goes beyond. So we're going to sing this morning, I'm expecting great things. Try it with me. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. One more time, I'm I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Now, when you're expecting great things, you've got to be specific with God and tell Him exactly where you expect those great things. So I want you to repeat after me when I say in my life, in my home, and all around. Here we go. In my life, in my life, you do great things. You do great things. In my home, in my home, you do great things. All around, all around, you do great things. Eyes haven't seen, I choose to believe in great things. Try that again. Eyes haven't seen, eyes haven't seen, I choose to believe in great things. One more time. Eyes haven't seen. Eyes haven't seen, I choose to believe in great things. Oh, I'm expecting. 
expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. Oh, I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things, great things in my life, in my life, you do great things in my home, you do great things all around, all around. You do great things. Eyes haven't seen. I choose to believe in great things. Eyes haven't seen. Eyes haven't seen. I choose to believe in great things. I, I'm expecting great things. Expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. I don't know about you, but I'm expecting. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. I'm expecting great things. Great things. In my life, in my life, you do great things, you do great things. In my home, in my home, you do great things. All around, you do great things. haven't seen I choose to believe in great things oh eyes haven't seen I choose to believe in great things oh eyes haven't seen I choose to believe in great things one more time Oh, eyes haven't seen, I choose to believe in great things. Hallelujah. Glory. Even when our eyes don't see it, we have to choose to believe in great things. And we'll find that when we believe, that they will show up. Hallelujah. We're going to sing, I am a friend of God. We thank God that he calls us friend. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to ask that you join in with us and sing it. I am a friend of a God, friend of God. Amen. Who am I that you are mindful of me? That you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me? It's amazing. Oh. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. Whoa, I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. 
He calls me friend. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. I am a friend. I am a friend of God. I am a friend. Friend of God, I am a friend of God. He calls me friend. God Almighty, Lord of glory, you have called me friend. God Almighty. God Almighty, Lord of, Lord of glory, have you me. have called me friend. God Almighty, God Almighty, Lord of glory. Lord of glory. Bless the name of the Lord, for the Lord is good. Amen. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations. Come on and just bless the Lord with me. Come on and put your hands together for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. And we bless him and we praise him and we glorify him and we magnify the name of the Lord. For the Lord, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run there too and are safe. Come on and just say hallelujah. Are you glad to be in this house one more time? Are you glad to be alive? Has he done anything for you? Glory, 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 glory. Has he given you the victory? He's worthy and he's worthy and he's worthy to be praised amen and amen and we delight ourselves in the lord the word says delight thyself also in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and we're glad to be in his house one more time amen and amen i first of all i want to just thank everyone who celebrated with me on last week amen i think i'm on the 20th anniversary of my 19th birthday and so I want to thank you for celebrating with me. Amen. I certainly, I don't take it for granted 
because I understand people don't have to be nice, amen. People don't have to go out of their way to show appreciation. So I, th I am thankful and grateful for all of the birthday greetings, everyone that saluted me on last week. Let's say amen. God is good, amen. So I've got a especially good reason to give God praise, amen. Come on and say hallelujah. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. But not just me. God's just been good to us. Amen. And he's kept us despite everything else that is going on. God has kept us. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to promote. I want to push. We are doing Zoom meetings with our men and with our ladies. Let's say amen. And every Tuesday, the ladies are getting together and they are fellowshipping uh, in, in, in different ways. This week, I believe, is the exercise zoom was last, this just past Tuesday, amen. And so this week they are coming together to discuss different things that's going to be pertinent to ladies. And I want to encourage all of the ladies of Living Waters, invite your friends. It's growing. God is blessing it. And I want to encourage you to participate, and that is on Tuesday, amen. Amen. Now, brothers, we were to get together on last week. Amen. And we had a bit of challenges with our attendance. So we're going to work on that because I want us to resume our man cave Mondays. Amen. Can I be transparent? I know I'm on Facebook stream. We had our man cave Monday. Amen. I know, I know Brother Gerald was at work and my brother Elijah joined and it was him and I on the call. And I said, I can talk to you anytime. I said, I want to talk to the other brothers. Amen. And so we want to make sure we have our participation. We want to do what we have to do as the church of God. So, brothers, I'll be giving you a call, and we'll get together, and we will fellowship one with the other. Come on and just say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I'm eager to get to the word of God. Today is Communion Sunday, and we're going to worship the Lord through communion. Amen. And I know Lady Vanessa is in the back getting us prepared. Amen. But uh, my son's... Uh, prepared a musical selection. My namesake is looking at me like I'm crazy. Amen. But they prepared a musical selection. Now, I don't know where Jordan is, but I'm going to ask him to come down here and get on the bass. Amen. You don't recall, Jeffrey, right before service? Okay. All right. All right. And Lady V? All right. We're going to just have a little fun in worshiping God. Amen. All right. And uh, all right, Jordan, get on the bass. And if you're streaming and you're listening, amen, this is going to be a treat for you, amen, as we worship the Lord together, amen, amen. We're going to just worship him in song as we were prior to morning worship, amen. Come on and say amen. Come on, put your hands together for the Lord. Put your hands together and let's worship him, amen. Let's put our hands together. And we're going to call on the name of Jesus. How many of you know there's no other name like the name of Jesus? Huh? Sing with me. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, 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 Savior, 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 Savior. Savior, give them glory, 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 glory. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, glory, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you, 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. 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 A Jesus. Jesus. A Jesus. 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 No other name but no power in it. Jesus. There's healing in the Jesus. 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 Alpha and Domain. Jesus. Beginning and the end. Jesus. Wonderful. Jesus. Everlasting King. Jesus. King of Kings. Jesus. Lord of Lords. Jesus. Mary's baby. Jesus. Savior. Jesus. Heart fixer. Jesus. Mind regulator. Jesus. Healer. Jesus. 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 Alpha and Omega. Jesus. 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 Amen. Come on and put your hands together. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. You know, they say every good superhero needs a theme song. Amen. Hey, Jordan, hit that bass line for me. Now, I need that as a ringtone right there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on and tell the Lord thank you. God is good all of the time, and all of the time, God is good. Amen. Come on and just pray with me. Lord God, we thank you on this day for your goodness and for your power. We thank you for being King of Kings, for being Lord of Lords. Thank you, Lord, for all of those that are connected to us right now, those that are touching and agreeing with us by way of Facebook and by way of Ambo TV, those that are in the sanctuary. Lord, we know that you alone are King of Kings and Lord of Lords. God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for both our friends as well as our adversaries. God, that you would save, hallelujah, that you would deliver, oh God, that you would set free, God, in the name of Jesus, that we would receive victory and glory and that your name would be glorified. Heal, Lord Jesus. Deliver, Lord Jesus. Supply everything that's needed, oh God. Finances, peace of mind, rest, oh God. Favor, completeness and wholeness in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, bless your people. God, and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Lord, we thank you right now for having your way and having your will done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You never know what you need might be traveling from the heavens right now, right towards you, hallelujah. And the enemy may be trying to hold it up, hallelujah. Which is why you must unleash your arsenal of praise. Even now, hallelujah. That what God has for you, hallelujah, glory, 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 won't be intercepted, won't be impeded, but will come to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on and say Jesus. Come on and say Jesus. Come on and say Jesus. Come on and say victory. Come on and say healing. Come on and say prosperity. Come on and say wealth. Hallelujah. Come on and say promotion in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you glory, honor, and praise in the name of Jesus. Shout becoming. Hallelujah. Some of us need to step into what God has already said in the name of Jesus. Protection for our children and our families. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We touch and agree a covering over living waters right now. Ha! Thank you. Over your families, over your children, over your extended family, over your household, over your finances, over your mind. In the name of Jesus. And we receive it in Jesus' name. Come on and say thank God. And amen and amen. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord and we thank him. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. The enemy's upset. Amen. That you would dare come to his house to worship him, to glorify him, and to magnify him. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. But we come to bless the name of the Lord. We come to hear what God has to say to us. We come to connect with heaven. Hallelujah. And how many people know that heaven is watching? Hallelujah. How many people know that Jesus is here? Thank you. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. And he has come to see about us. Amen. I want to just quickly, as we prepare to get into this word, I want you to know that on Wednesdays, we are teaching on the kingdom of the cults, the kingdom of the cults. We're dealing with Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, how many people have had a Jehovah's Witness knock on your door? Amen. Everybody has had that experience. The reason that we are teaching on the kingdom of the cults is this. Not that individuals are bad people or, or somehow um, something that is an anomaly, but the reason that we're teaching on it is so that you will know the truth. Amen. And so that your children will know the truth. Amen. Because right now, the kingdom halls are full of people that used to belong to Baptists, United Methodists, Church of God in Christ, Pentecostal churches because we don't understand certain things and have not been taught. And the Bible says that the enemy roams about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so we must know the truth and know what we believe and why we believe it so that we don't fall prey to false doctrine. Amen. And then by you knowing it, it just may be that God opens up a door of opportunity for you to talk to somebody and help them to see the light. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. We're going to get into the word today. I, I just want to share this. Um, I met a Jehovah's Witness. He and I have become good friends. And uh, he has said to me, he said, there are some things in our teaching that I know aren't true. And he said, but I never knew how to deal with it. He said, because this is how I was raised. And there was an elder in the Jehovah's Witnesses uh, in, in their doctrine and in their teachings, and he had been converted to uh, out of the kingdom hall into what we would consider Pentecostal churches, mainstream churches. And he said, I often doubted what I had been taught. And he says, but no one ever gave me a word to draw me in. And he says, I was ripe for the picking. He said, but nobody ever had a word. And so this is why we're teaching what we're teaching on Wednesday. So I want to encourage you to tune in Wednesdays at 7 p.m. We're going to be streaming on Facebook. We'll be here in the sanctuary. But I want us to be educated and to be strengthened in the things of the Lord. Come on and say amen. I'm almost afraid to ask how many people have ever been taught anything about the Jehovah's Witnesses. But we have encountered them, all of us. Amen. So we've got to be taught the things of the Lord. Let's go to the word of God on today. And we're going to go to the book of Exodus. We're going to go to, there's, there's uh, three passages of scripture that I want to give you on this morning. Exodus chapter 3, verse number 17. I'm also going to give you Numbers chapter 13, verse 27 through 30. Amen. Numbers 13, verses 27 to 30. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And we will conclude uh, the last scripture as we get into our text on today. Father God, we thank you for your word and for your promises. We thank you because there's nobody else like you. 
there's none else beside you. God, we ask that you would receive all glory, honor, and praise. We bless your name and we thank you for all that you have done. Now keep us, anchor us in the center of your will that you would be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. And we bless you and praise you and thank you for all things in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 3 gives us the promise. It gives us the promise. Amen. You know, there was once a woman who had been in a very challenging relationship. And after she got out of that challenging relationship and she was dealing with a man that didn't treat her right, she encountered another man who was very kind, very generous, and loved her with all of his heart. And it took a while for her to understand that she was now married to a man that loved her. And what she was challenged with doing was she was bringing the baggage of her old relationship into her marriage. And she did not have the opportunity to fully enjoy her husband until she realized that she was married to another man. Mm -hmm. And many times as believers, we can carry baggage from who we used to be. And it prevents us from truly enjoying all of the benefits that we have as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And it is for that reason that I come to you with this topic of let us get unstuck. Mm -hmm. We got to get unstuck. You know, where things aren't bad, but they're really not as good as they should be. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 I've got a job, but I'm not doing as well as I ought to be doing. It's what I call that in-between time where it's not exactly where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 3, verse number 17, God speaks to Moses and he gives him the promise. And he said, and I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Parasites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. He gives him the promise. And isn't it like God to give you a promise while you're still in trial? Isn't it like God to give you a promise while you're still facing the problem? And this is what God does because God is eternal. He is from everlasting to everlasting. So God doesn't see you where you are, but he sees you where he has called you to be. And this is why God never speaks to you out of where you are right now. This is why God's word is always challenging because God's word is always calling you to a higher place, to a higher place than what you have seen with your naked eye. This is why the Bible is clear that without faith, it's impossible to please God because God isn't speaking to you about the stuff you can see. You don't need God for that. You need God because God is speaking to you about stuff that you cannot see with your naked eye. And he gives a promise that I'm going to bring you into a land that's flowing with milk and with honey. God delivers them and brings them out of Egypt. And when they get out of Egypt, it is now time for them to enter into the promised land. So now we got to skip forward all the way to Numbers. Numbers chapter 13. They get to Numbers chapter 13, and now God is ready to execute the promise that he has already told them, that I'm going to bring you into a land that flows with milk and with honey. Come on and say amen. So Numbers chapter 13, and we get to, let's go to verse 26. Let's start there. Well, verse 25 Moses has sent out spies in the land. They just got out of Egypt. And God delivered them with a strong hand. And verse, 26 said, verse 25 says, And they returned from searching the land after 40 days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel 
unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. They're about to go into this land flowing with milk and honey. And they told them and said, we came to the land that you sent us to. And surely it flows with milk and honey. And this is the fruit of it. So they identified the promise. We have identified and we can now see what God has promised us. Verse 28. Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land. And the cities are walled and very great. Moreover, we saw the children of Anak there, and the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea by the coast of Jordan. We see the promise, but there's a challenge before we get to the promise. Verse 30, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it now watch this but the men that went up with him said we be not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we and they brought up an evil report remember that word they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel saying the land through which we have gone to search out is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Watch this. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And we and there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which were come of the giants. There's two things I want you to catch from that text. One, they brought back an evil report. Number two, they saw giants in the land hallelujah and you have to make up in your mind if you are going to cohabitate with giants or are you going to defeat giants when God gives you a promise you have to make the critical decision are we going to cohabitate with the giants or are we going to get victory over the giants if you decide to cohabitate with giants You'll get good, but not good enough. You'll be blessed, but not to the full extent that God intends for you to have. You will be in between. You'll stagger, but you won't run. When you make the decision to cohabitate with giants. Yes, it's a little easier to cohabitate with them because you don't have to fight them as vigorously as you would if you want to overthrow them. So you've got to ask yourself, do you want to cohabitate with your giants or do you want to get the victory over them? Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Now watch this. Our Lord decided he was not going to cohabitate with giants. And when Satan decided he was going to lift himself up on the throne of God, Satan was immediately cast out because God says, I'm not sharing my glory. That ought to be our attitude that I'm not sharing the promises that God has given me. I'm going to kick the giants out. David said, Goliath, you've got to go. It reminds me of that prophet Martin Lawrence who often said, you ain't got to go home, but you are going to get out of here. Martin would say, I throw people out. And so we find that the, the spies that go up come back with an evil report. And if it is an evil report, then we know that it doesn't come from God, but it comes from Satan. So Satan has entered into the report that is now coming out. And the way Satan enters into the report that is coming out is that he strikes fear in them and they begin to utter Satan's words. Thank you, Jesus. Understand your words have power. Why don't you just say that with me? My words have power. Understand you were created in the image of God. Uh, my sons often reminds me that we have lied to them many times over you know the lie we tell children don't you sticks and stones may break my bones 
but words will never hurt me? How many people know that that's a lie? Because words have power. My God. You can crush somebody with your words. You can assault someone with your words. And so when you begin to give life to what the enemy has said, you are now giving faith to what the enemy has said. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But when you begin to repeat the enemy's word, you begin to call those things that are not, oh my God, as though they are, but not in a good sense. And so our words have power because life and death are in the power of the tongue and they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. Proverbs 18, 21. Therefore, we have to guard what we say. When you, you know, someone that may be sick and afflicted, you will hear people use language like my diabetes. That ain't your diabetes. Don't claim that. This is my this or this is my that. No, no, no. Because my words have power. Thank you, Jesus. I'm healed. My body may not have caught up with it yet, but I'm declaring healing in my body. I'm creating an atmosphere that agrees with the presence and with the word of God that I can call those things that are not as though they are because the enemy operates in what I can see, but God operates in those things that I cannot see. Thank you, Jesus. And so they begin to give life to what the enemy is saying. We got to be careful. Don't give life to what the enemy is saying. Don't walk around talking about I'm broke. No, I'm blessed and highly favored. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But you don't have any money. That don't matter. Joseph was broke. Joseph was a slave. And the Bible says in Genesis chapter 39 that Joseph was a prosperous man. I'm prosperous. You just don't see it yet. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. And so I'm speaking the favor of God over my life. They did a study where people would talk to plants. And when people cursed the plants, the plants would wither away and die. But when people talked favorably to the plants, the plants would live. How much more our spirit? And so we cannot utter what the enemy is saying. I'm not supposed to. Listen, if you got a cold and you sneezing all over the place, you need to get some NyQuil and stay home. I'm not talking about denial, but I'm talking about speaking faith. Come on and say amen. amen. Glory to God. Now, they begin to speak what the enemy has given them, and what the enemy gives them is contrary to what God has said. But Joseph, but I'm sorry, but Joshua and Caleb speak something different. Now, watch what Caleb does. The Bible says that Caleb stilled the people. You know why he stilled the people? In other words, he told the people, hush. Because somehow he knew that what we say matters. And he basically said, I don't want you putting that out there in the atmosphere. He says, I need you to hush. And let me put something in the atmosphere. And he says, we are well able to take the land. Hallelujah. And he begins to speak what God has spoken to Moses. He begins to speak the promise that was spoken to Moses. Tell somebody, speak the promise. He begins to speak the promise that, hey, we're blessed and highly favored. We're the head and not the tail. We're overcomers and we're above and not beneath. He speaks the promises of God. He determines that he does not want to cohabitate with the giants, but he wants to kick the giants out. But the children of Israel rebels and they speak the words of the enemy. And they say to Moses, man, let's get, they say, let's get a, a prince and go back to Egypt. They said, we're going to get out of here because Moses brought us all the way out here just so we could die. But how many people know that he didn't bring you this far just to leave you? Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All you got to do is look where you come from. Hallelujah. And you know that God is still with you. Thank you, Jesus. He is not a God of incomplete jobs. But he that has started a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. If he didn't want you to overcome, he wouldn't have brought you this far. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. 
Where God has brought you is just a precursor of where he wants to take you. So instead of being fearful that you're out here by yourself, you ought to be saying to yourself, we ought to be saying to yourself, ourselves, where God is going to take us must be phenomenal. Eyes haven't seen it and ears have not heard it and neither has it entered into the heart of man. The good things that the Lord has prepared for those of us who love him, but he has revealed it unto us by his spirit. So we got to be able to look at fear and say, fear, you are lying. We got to be able to tell the devil, no devil, I'm not going to give life to your words. We got to go to 2 Corinthians 10 and 5 and cast down every vain imagination and every vain thought that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. Because what the enemy is presenting to you is not what God has said about you. So they begin to get fearful. They begin to speak words of doubt. But Joshua and Caleb speak something different, and they say, we're well able to take the land. They are now creating worlds. They are now creating words that agree with heaven to bring life to what the God has said. Now, this is what the Bible says, that they brought an evil report. Remember that? An evil report. When our words don't agree with God's words, that is considered an evil report and evil things come from Satan. So when we begin to speak off of what we fear, off of what's happening in the natural, that is Satan manipulating us. If you found out somebody was manipulating you, you then look at them with new eyes. If you realize that you've been manipulated by somebody, there's a righteous indignation that comes over you when you realize that you've been manipulated. And the way the enemy manipulates us is the enemy gives us spiritual amnesia. And we forget where the Lord has brought us from. And because we forget where he has brought us from, we get fearful as of where we are. But when you consider the fact that he brought them up out of Egypt, when you consider the fact that he dried up the Red Sea and made a wall of water on the left and a wall of water on the right and drowned Pharaoh and his army in the Red Sea, when you consider that he caused a plague of frogs and a plague of flies and that he killed the firstborn, when you consider all of these things that God sent manna to feed them, you would think that they would know that if God brought them that far, that he would bring them to the promised land. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. When you figure out that God has blessed you from your brokenness, that he has called you, that he's delivered you, that he's equipped you, that he favored you, that he guided you, that he helped you, that he ignited you, that he justified you, that he kept you, that he loved you, that he mastered, that he overcome, that he did not allow the enemy to overcome you, that he protected you, that he quickened you, that he rescued you, that he saved you, that he triumphed, that he gave you the blessings from the uttermost to the guttermost, that he gave you victory, that he won, that he has excused you. You ought to know that God has not brought you this far just to leave you come on and say thank you Jesus he gives us spiritual amnesia glory to God but the way that you remember things and that you recall things hallelujah I used to do it with my sons when they would have a vocab test we would write the word on one half and I would hide the other half of the paper and I would say all right the word is assiduous what does it mean and they would go uh and they would begin to look back in their mind over the word until they could utter the definition come on and say thank you Jesus what are you trying to say they had to rehearse Curse the word to themselves. Glory to God. Is there anybody in here that's up for a spiritual vocabulary test? Thank you, Jesus. And having done all to stand, stand there for. Thank you, Jesus. He's my rock and my shield. He's my fortress. The righteous run there too and are. Come on and say thank you Jesus. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not. Come on and say glory to God. He is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I? 
Come on and say thank you, Jesus. You got to give yourself a spiritual vocabulary test. You got to remind yourself of the God you serve. I know that you've got problems. I know that you've got situations. But somebody told me that God has given him a name above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Somebody told me that he does not give me the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody told me that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Somebody told me, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, and that my God will do exceedingly and abundantly above that I can think or imagine according to the power that's at work within me. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And so I've got to arm myself with the word of God. I can't afford to have spiritual amnesia. I know where God has brought me from. I know that the Lord has done great and marvelous things. I know where we used to worship and where we worship now. I know the doors that was closed in my face that are open to me now. I know what the enemy tried and it did not work work so devil I'm not falling for it this time Satan you're a liar and the father of lies Satan I'm not gonna lose my footing but I'm encouraged to go on with the Lord come on and say thank you Jesus thank you Jesus can I tell you a secret about the devil that when the devil presents something to you He's presenting something that is a facade. It looks strong and mighty to the enemy. But right underneath that is the enemy's fears. You see it happening all throughout scripture. When Pharaoh started persecuting the children of Israel, he, the Bible says he was afraid of them. And what Pharaoh said, the king, let's oppress them because they are mightier than we are. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. So the children of Israel felt like they were being oppressed, but they didn't realize that their oppressor was actually afraid of them. When Saul tried to kill David, the Bible says that he was afraid of David. He understood that the Lord was with him. And so when the enemy is attacking you, the trick to know is that the enemy is presenting something to you but right underneath it, he's afraid of you. I need to break this thing down. Y'all remember Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz? You remember the Wicked Witch of the West? Everybody was afraid of her. Dorothy got some water, threw some water on the Wicked Witch of the West, and she melted. And all it took was a splash of water. That's how the enemy is. The enemy is presenting himself. As though he's got power, my God. But my Bible tells me I've given you power over all the power of the enemy. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Watch this. When they finally get into the promised land, Caleb says to Joshua, he says, I am now 85 years old. Thank you, Jesus. He says, and I remember the words that Moses spoke to us. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Watch this. I wandered 40 years in the wilderness, my God. 
We were out of Egypt, but we weren't yet in the promised land. It was good, but it wasn't good enough. Hallelujah. It was better, but it wasn't God's best. But I hung around long enough to see us get to the promised land. And Caleb turns to Joshua and he says, I might not be a young man anymore, but I got the same strength that I had when I was 40 years old. And Caleb says, give me my mountain now. Come on and say, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I don't think you caught it. He had to wander in the wilderness 40 years because of unbelief. Because of unbelief, he was dealing in good but not good enough. But if Caleb was here, he would tell us, no need for you all to suffer like I did. You don't have to linger between good but not good enough. You don't have to stay stuck in a quadru, a quandary trying to figure out where you ought to be. You can de put a demand on the word of of God to get everything that God has promised you. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. And so Caleb puts a demand on the word of God. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. You know, they call checking accounts demand accounts because you can put a demand on the money that's in that bank account. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. The Lord is saying you have spiritual checks right now that you ought to be writing, hallelujah, to deal with what you are facing and confronting because God wants to release the blessing in the natural, but you got a check that you've got to write. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And the way that you write your spiritual check is that you must begin proclaiming what God has said. Hallelujah. You got to look fear in the face and say, I don't agree with you. I know that God has something more and my riches doesn't come from what I see. But God's going to supply my needs according to his riches in glory. I might not see it, but I understand how the spirit world works. That I must operate in faith because without faith it is impossible to please God. So my only way to beat the devil is in faith. I've got to trust God's word. I've got to lean on God's word and this is what God showed me that his word is quick and sharp and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword what does that mean that means when you begin to proclaim God's word God's word will go out watch this watch it the Bible says that his word will not return void but it will accomplish that to which he sent it and sometimes we declare his word just for a good feeling we declare his word just so we can shout and get happy but I dare you to declare his word over your family I declare my child healed and delivered I declare him saved I declare God opening up doors and making way for me on the job because I'm the head and not the tail I declare God's word that the enemy will be my footstool I declare God's word that above all things that I'll be in good health and prosper even as my soul prospers begin to write your check by declaring God's word over your natural situation. Watch this. And the word begins to release power. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. The word will begin to release favor. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. The word will begin to open it up doors of opportunity for you. Thank you, Jesus. You'll bump into somebody and you think it's happenstance. But it was nothing but the divine presence of God opening up doors for you. Setting a plain path for you before your enemies. It was nothing nothing but God releasing the blessing over your life because I've decided to make Jesus my choice. Come on and say thank you, Jesus. Come on and bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. I want to encourage you on today. I want to encourage you that God has given all of us the promise. Hallelujah. And you've got to make a decision. Are you going to cohabitate with giants or are you going to kick those giants out? Because he's presenting to you a giant that is terrified of you.
He's literally shaking in his boots. Hallelujah. Don't get spiritual amnesia. Don't forget where the Lord is. Can anybody just, just, just go back in your mind and just think a little bit about who you used to be? Can you just think about where you used to be? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Some of you got testimonies that make me want to run around the church. When you think about where God has brought you from. When nobody thought, hallelujah, that the Lord was on your side. They didn't have the courage to say it, but you could tell it by the way they looked at you. When they thought less of you. And how God raised you up. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My sister sitting back there, she's a doctor. And I said, doctor, I said, and when she got her doctorate degree, I said, explain that to me. She says, well, that's a terminal degree. I said, well, what do you mean? She says, that means you can't get educated no more in this profession than a doctorate. I said, oh. And I thought back when I was on this little street called Fraser Street. And our mother is raising five children by herself. And neighbors are telling her, why do you keep your children in church all the time? Don't you know I went back to that little old block just a few weeks ago? And some of the same guys I grew up with that used to hang on the corner are still hanging on the corner. And I said, look where the Lord has brought us from. Do you think he brought us this far? just to leave us come on and say thank you jesus oh why, why why don't you try just think about where he brought you from think about it think about it think about it when you didn't have the money to pay the bill but look at you now when you felt like you were all alone but look at you now when you were scorned and ridiculed hallelujah but look at you now don't get spiritual amnesia, for the Lord didn't bring you this far to leave you. And write your spiritual check. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You got to evict that giant. Hallelujah. God didn't intend for me to fail. <laughs> Satan, you a lie. <laughs> and the father of it, thank you, Jesus. By your stripes, oh God, I am healed. Then you got to do like Job and say, I'm going to wait. <laughs> Thank you till my change come. Glory to God. Our God and our Father, we thank you. We bless your name, God. We worship and we adore you. We thank you for those who are gathered in your house and those that are connected to us through live stream. Right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we write our spiritual check that we are delivered that we are free, that you are making ways out of no way, that you are delivering us, you are taking us from better to best, from good to advanced, that you are elevating us, that we are the head and not the tail, that we are not stuck in middle ground, but that we're going to higher ground. In the name of Jesus Christ. God, we love you. And we adore you and we magnify you and we bless your holy name. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise in Jesus' name. Come on and tell God thank you. Come on and tell him I receive it right now. I receive what you've given me, God. I write this spiritual check right now, God, that I would advance and not fall behind, that I would move forward and not lag, that I would be above and not beneath, that I would be healed and not sick. That I will be strong and not weak. That I be in the place that you have signed in Jesus' name. And let the church of God say thank God and amen and amen. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. We're preparing for. I just want to praise you.